are live on location at the Cathedral of St. Diego de la Vega, right in the heart of Spanish Town. Now, this church in particular has a lot of aesthetic qualities. Yes, so we are at this magnificent church that is so old that it has gray hair. Look at the surroundings here. Over there, Javi. Why all this is so old? This church is over 300 years old. And most of it, except for the grave, are still, stand it's still standing. Look at the architecture, these windows. You can see the value, not so much in these windows, but on the inside where we're not allowed to, to record. There are some beautiful windows which will show you the stained glass windows in still images. Look at the shape, the lines, and the working of the windows. And we're told that these are the original windows. It's amazing. And it would appear that they're celebrating 300 years. Well, they have celebrated their 300. Cathedral. What's that? Renaissance. Celebrating over 300 years of existence. And as we walk, we can see the, the wonderful vegetation. So it gives a bit of softness to the place and greenery. We're all hosting a lot of graves around. Speaking to the caretaker before, the guide, and he was saying to us that this church had a lot of race, well, not race, but social classes, and they were separated. So for instance, back then it was the norm to bury people inside of the church. And when we were inside before, which we will show you some images of the churches, the graves actually on the ground of the church. Now, even in that situation, they had different classes that were buried in different sections. Now these persons who are buried out here are, 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 are termed as commoners. They're members of the church but apparently they didn't have any money so they, they got buried outside. Also we're seeing the infrastructure of this church. You can tell that the foundation itself, as literally said before, is very very strong. You can tell that the intricacy, the intricate details with which this church was made was very, very artistic, very strong, very last, was built to last. And the community, we are told, looked to this church as somewhat of a saving grace. So, for instance, when they're having problems and stuff like that, they'll come to the church to pray. So it is, it is a symbol of salvation for the community. So not only is it an an ancient beauty. Not only is it the parish church, not only is it the parish church, but it is also it holds so much a wealth of history here. And also, we notice just now around here, Burgess, uh, Burgess that they also have the lignum vitae tree. That's the name of it. Yeah. Around this side. And again, we're seeing a lot of graves here. Where the common people were buried. The rich person is very sad. And most of these, most of these, um, most of these, uh, the, the, the foundation of the thing, most of it are original. Uh, so we're seeing over there, you know, the natural tree of the Sophia, which is the first time I'm actually seeing in person. Actually, not our national tree, but our national plant. They use the purple rose from the tree, from, from the tree to do the plant. Can you see that? That's so beautiful. Wow. Sorry, Mr. Burgess. <laughs> so yes, we're going right around. Look at, look at the architecture of this window. This is amazing. Look at it. Look at the lines. The quality. What are some of the elements you're seeing here, Burgess? Shape. Of it. Oh my goodness. This is what you call aesthetically beautiful. Yeah. This is really cool. Wow. You see all that? You're seeing the dimension of the building. Yes. We're seeing the levels of dimension in this building. We're seeing foreground, middle ground, and also background. You saw the middle. Building. And you'll see this wonderful building that is all 
older than your grandma, your grandma's grandma. This church has so many facets, so many aspects to it. Not only is it full of value on the inside, but also on the outside we're seeing, and, and, and I must say that I have seen strip clubs next to churches. I've also seen rum bars next to churches. But can you imagine, here it is, we have a prison right next to the church. That is amazing. We're seeing this is a Ancient, ancient, wonderful, magnificent church. The Nigdumvaiti tree, which is our national plant, not our national tree, but we use the plant, as I said before, as the symbolism. And this, while walking here, it would appear that we're walking through the 16th century, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. From the brick walls to the type of the type of uh, building that surrounds this church. So, as you can see right here, and I start right here because the vision is an important memory from black history. Are you seeing that done? These are called what? These things, and what they, what they are actually paying homage. When we start down here, let me start right from down here before I come to this one. As I said before, these are called busts, and what they are, they are paying homage from starting from here and all around, all the way around the, the building, it's paying homage to European kings. So we're seeing here the faces of two kings, the same for the next bust. The artistic word for them, for these windows, are busts. And we're seeing again European kings. Now, this one over here is a very special one because this my dear students marks the end of the slave trade and because this shrine that's on this bus right here <laughs> you notice that these are africans you can see how handsome we are so we, we, you know it's different from the, the, the european kings and what this is is it's paying homage actually to the end of the slave trade and this signifies the fact that African black people such as yourself and myself are now able after the abolition of slavery which was in 1839 by my checking they allowed slaves black people who are, who are now free to, to worship him and this bus is a sign that we were free and now we're able we were able back then to worship in this church because Previously, this church was just for the few rich persons who were living in Jamaica at the time, and blacks weren't allowed to worship here. So this is very, this is, this is very uh, instrumental in our history as black people. Alright guys, well just a little fun fact, as we are supposed to know, as we all are supposed to know, cathedrals are built in the shape of a cross. Now at the front part of the church, that is called the nave, the second part that goes horizontally across, that is called the transept, and around here is called the transept. Now this part of the transept was built after 1840. Now as you can see, it's separate from that, which is the Roman arch, and that arch right there, that arch right there is the Gothic arch. Now this type of architecture was used because the British were trying to move away from Rome and start their own movement. You can see these are two separate buildings. Seeing as that side was built after this one. Hence the space right now. This just adds to the variation of the design of the building. 
Now imagine coming up this brick aisle on a Sunday morning with bright red or some say burgundy red. Burgundy red brick walking here. It would be so beautiful, but today it's a bit washed out. But that does not detract from the artistic elements that still exist. Let's go around. close as we can get to the original color of this church as the rest of the bricks as you can see here and further up are washed out now feeling these bricks the textural quality still exists because you still have these ridges here even though it's as a touch it kind of drops off but hey that's okay you're going up the church the textural quality is still there and it gives it that old rugged strong i've been here a long time feel you getting that feeling? <laughs> okay. Going around. Can anybody guess what these are? Uh, anchors to hang people on. No. Oh, are they things to shoot people? No. They're actually things that take the water off the roof. <laughs> no, simple. They made it like that. It's as simple as that. Like how today we have those things on the side, the drainers on the side of the house are just run off. This is how they did it. Down on the roof, you can't go up on the roof. Down on the roof there is a depth down there and the water goes down there and the and the metal pipes are right here which cause which just brings out the water basically. Alright come around. Now let's highlight some of the windows, the stained glass windows. I'll show you some on the inside as well. Alright, now the windows still maintain, the ones on the top still maintain their textural quality that we can see on many stained glass windows. It's the same texture on many stained glass windows, even in Seventh day Adventist churches, Pentecost churches, and such, and the same colors. Now we can see here, we, <laughs> we can see here where they have actually painted this wall to give it back that feel and that touch that it had back in the day. Now you see the ladies in their long gowns, their long dress with the umbrellas over their heads and the gentlemen in their Sunday best whether they are their aristocrats or they are from the lower class you see them dressed up coming here worshipping on a Sunday and I would think that they they would think it's a pleasure to worship in a place like this because if you look all the way up there I really don't know what's up there yeah. yeah it's classy right? it gives it that classy oriental look even on the top there is there's like a pole up there yeah but on the second floor here this is where we have the organ this is where the organ floor is and there's a big pipe organ that we'll show you later on that's in the church all right now the architecture of this church was inspired by the british early in the 19th century and in fact the architecture has a lot of aesthetic qualities not only on the outside and in the surrounding areas but we can see this especially on the inside come on let's take a look 